guys, it's me Alexei. Um, I, today I'm going to be reading you a story from Reddit. Um, I just got back, I just got home from school so that's why I looked really, like, I'm kind of like tired. So, um, yeah, and I just got back from cheer so my face is a little sweaty and oily. Okay, so this is actually a series. There's two parts to this, so if you like this video, um, comment down below if you want me to do part two because I'd be glad to do that. I also wanted to let you guys know that I will also put this in the description box. I'm also I'm changing a few of the words and some sentences because it has a little bit of swearing and some inappropriate language, so I'm going to be changing it. So if you read along with me and you notice I'm not reading the same thing or I'm adding something, that's why I'm trying to make it as appropriate as possible because I know I have a bunch of minors watching my videos. So, let's get started. I wanted to tell you guys that this is a very, I don't have to say, very grown up story. Like, this is something that I don't think 10 or under would want to listen to. If, you're, if you get scared very easily, uh, please click out of this video. If you're young and get scared, please, please, please do not watch this, especially at night. Now, usually we put our own twist into it with a serial killer or monster or ghost or whatever is the killer. Either way, it always manages to keep me up at night after hearing it. I even remember one time I was fairly young. My best friend at the time, Dan, and I were having a sleepover. After retelling that same story, Dan decided to scare the crap out of me. He packed his sleeping bag with pillows and blankets to make it look like he was still fast asleep. He then woke me up by saying, John, I'm upstairs. He then proceeded to walk down, to, down the stairs one by one saying, John, I'm on the third step. And so on until he got to the bottom. When I eventually found out was, it was him by smacking his sleeping bag, foiling his plan. Okay. So now this brings me to a few nights ago. I'm currently living alone in a very small house. And as I was sleeping, I woke up to the sound of a man moaning. Now this isn't the stupid moan a ghost would do in its scary cartoon movie. It wasn't a scream and it wasn't really loud. It started quiet and got louder and with a hair rising eek noise. Safe to say, it woke me up. But seeing as if I dreamed I was dreaming beforehand. I was not sure if I had imagined it or not. Either way, I got up and searched the house a little bit. I'm kind of the paranoid type. Nothing. No one was there. I must have imagined it. The next night, right before drifting off to sleep, I heard the sound of shuffling coming from my basement. The stairs to my basement are really close to my bedroom, so if I turned left outside of my room, I could walk downstairs. Then I heard it, clear as day. Hey. My heart dropped. Who the heck is in my house? I figured someone was robbing the place and had no idea what I should do. Then I heard, John, I'm in the basement. Who the heck is this? And why are they in my house? Then the voice whispered, John, I'm on the first step. The voice was really bizarre. It was a whisper, but the sound almost could cut and out like it was a recording. The voice sounded like it was constantly out of breath. That was enough for me. I sprang out of bed, grabbed a trophy, the only thing that was heavy enough and long enough to use as a weapon in my room, and I ran to the top of the stairs. The lights were off so I could only see the top five stairs or so. Who the heck are you and what are you doing in my house? I yelled. I got no reply. I turned on the basement light and ran downstairs ready to beat the crap out of someone. The bastard was hiding. I couldn't see him. I frantically checked all of the possible hiding spots, but no one was there. What the heck? Eventually, I got up the nerves to go upstairs and check any of the other rooms. When I got to the top of the stairs, I saw that the front door was wide open. Whoever it was probably ran out. I was still terrified, but kind of relieved. Still, I checked every room and made sure the doors were all locked. So no sleep for me that night. The next gosh darn night, this stuff kept happening. I woke up to the sound of movement coming from downstairs, and before I could do anything, I heard, John, I'm on the third step. 
I quickly jumped out of bed and grabbed that trophy, turned on the basement light. Before I went downstairs, I noticed something. My front door, back door, and garage door were all wide open. What the heck is happening? I thought. Then I heard it coming from the basement again. The very soft whisper of, John, I'm on the fourth step. I ran down there screaming profanity and was ready to really hurt whoever this was. Then became more frightened than I have ever been in my life. Again, absolutely no one was in my basement. I closed all of the doors making sure they were all locked, even though I was sure they were before, and checked the rest of the house. I phoned the police, but they told me that they would send a car to look around, but if there was no one in the house or any damage to the house to investigate, it would be pointless to ch come check it out. They told me to call if it happens again. I felt insane. That stupid scary story was constantly on my mind. That's when I thought of Dan playing his dumb trick on me as a kid. And you may be thinking, of course, it's Dan playing another trick. Dan has been dead for 10 years. He overdosed on drugs years ago. I stopped being friends with him when he got into that lifestyle, but I was still shaken when he died. I like to say I went and bought a hotel room and stayed there, but stupid me, I didn't. I, just, I decided to stay home and push my luck, and you guessed it. The next night was worse. This was last night, and I tried to sleep, but couldn't. So I was lying in my bed waiting for something to happen. Then, finally, it did. Hey, came the forced whisper from the basement. I couldn't move. All I did was stare at the wall and hope to God the sound would stop. John, I'm on the top of the stairs. Crap! I waited for about a minute in silence. Then the voice came again, closer this time. John, I'm outside your bedroom. I stared at the wall, hoping I was just going insane. Nothing was there. Nothing was there. I heard the door creak open. I couldn't make myself look. I was in shock or something. The voice said, weirdly calm, John, I see you. It sounded like it was right beside my bed. At that point, I had enough. I screamed and launched myself out of bed. What the heck? No one was in my room. The door was still completely shut. That's it, I thought. I'm out of here. I ran out of the house with just one set of clothes, not failing to notice that all the doors and now the cabinets in my kitchen were all wide open. Skip ahead to earlier today. Now, I didn't really believe in this stuff, but after what I had experienced, I sure heck do now. But I, heard, I hired a sidekick lady, whatever you call them, who had a Ouija board. We went to my house in the early morning, seeing as if this stuff only happens to me at night. I wanted her to get rid of whatever ghost thing was doing this to me. I couldn't get the idea of Dan's ghost tormenting me from the grave, but because I let him go off on that path that led to his death. The lady, Tania her name was, was a normal looking chick. All she brought was a few candles in that Ouija board. We went down to the basement. It still freaked me the heck out. She told me to turn off the lights. I did and we set up the candles around the board. She did some weird stuff and began to talk to the spirit. She asked it things like, is someone here and what do you want? I was skeptical to, to believe it but I felt the handle thing move and I sure wasn't doing it. At this point, I feel like my life is over. I tell her about my old friend Dan and how I think it could be him because every few people know about the scary story we used to tell. She asked the spirit if it was mad at me and if I can do anything to help it. There was no answer. This is the part that really freaks me out. She then asked the entity if it was actually my friend Dan. The reply was a shockingly fast movement of the handle to the no indicator. Tania then asked the thing, who are you then? It simply replied, hate. Tania then said that she had to go and she was sorry that she couldn't help anymore. Update. Thank you all for your help. From this has been said, I sure as heck am now not going back into my house. However, I said I would update if more happens. Well, more happened. So I bought a hotel room for the night and was feeling pretty pleased with myself. I was still terrified, don't get me wrong, most of my night researching supernatural stuff like this, yet I still have no idea what is happening or what I should do. So this hotel I'm staying at is not a five-star resort. The rooms are simple and the layout of the place is very basic and old. Worst part is 
I got a room on the 6th floor, and the stupid elevator was broken. Luckily, I had no luggage to carry up, but it was still a pain in the butt to go up and down those stairs a bunch of times. So here's what happened. It was late, like really late. And I was pretty on the edge from what had happened to me, and from researching demons, ghosts, gremlins, whatever the heck popped up on my screen. I went to get something to eat from the vending machine on the third floor. I took the stairs. I bought a whole bunch of junk food and went back into the stairwell. It wasn't particularly dark in the stairwell, but it was pretty creepy. The walls were all painted white and scratched up. It was an old building. I had the weirdest feeling coming over me, and that's when I heard it. John, I'm down here. That same freaking voice from before. It sounded fairly far away, but I could tell it was coming from down the stairwell. It sounded so calm, yet the voice sounded so raspy and out of breath. For a second, I stood there not knowing what to do, expecting this bloody demon body monster to poke his head around the corner and chase me up the stairwell. I snapped out of it and started running up the stairs, almost tripping as I went up. When I got in between the fourth and fifth floor, I heard it again. Hey. I froze. The voice was coming from up, from up the stairs. What is this thing? It then said to me from maybe one step of the stairs up, John, I'll be in your room. So no chance in heck I'm going back up there. I ran down to the fourth floor exit, still expecting to see some creature crawling up the stairs. It wasn't there. But as I left the stairwell, I swear I heard it say, John, I'll see you soon. I spent hours just waiting in the fourth floor hallway, freaking out that whatever it is could would come charging down at me. Eventually, I made, a maid came by, starting her morning duties fairly early. I pretended I was an early riser and walked with her down the staircase when she had to go back down. I then checked out of the hotel and convinced one of my work friends to let me stay at his place. Also, all of my friends don't live in the city. They live somewhere else. I'm okay right now. I managed to take a long power nap, but I can't get this voice out of my head. John, I'll see you soon. So that is part one of the stories. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want me to read part two, please comment down below if you want me to and give this a thumbs up. And guys, we are almost at 50 subscribers. I can't thank you guys enough. Just maybe a month or two ago we were at 22. It's crazy how far we've gone. And I also wanted to let you guys know that once we hit 100 subscribers, I'm going to be doing something really cool and fun uh, to celebrate it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. If you also want to get notified every time I post a video, just press the bell button down below next to the subscribe button once you press subscribe. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.